Welcome back to the Beer Junkies. Today we are brewing an alt beer. The alt beer is very similar to the Vienna Lager, where it is a bitter amber ale. It uh, has a very well-balanced flavor with an intense maltiness, but a balancing bitterness. Uh, if you stick with us, we will walk you through our ingredients that we use, we, the grains we use, the water profile, the hops we use, and the yeast strain. We'll also walk you through our process with the mashing profile, mash out, sparging, the boil, whirlpool, knockout, the fermentation profile, and at the very end, the taste test of this, pro of this recipe. So stick with us and enjoy. The alt beer is a bitter amber beer with a dry finish. So to do this, we're gonna want a water profile of 50 parts per million of calcium, 15 parts per million of sodium, 110 parts per million of sulfate, 50 parts per million of fluoride, and you may wanna add some bicarbonates in there to keep that mash pH at a reasonable level. The, uh, the roasted malts that we're gonna add have a tendency to drop it just a little bit. We won't need it a lot because it is just an amber beer. But to do this, we are adding calcium chloride, gypsum, Epsom salt, pickling lime, and baking soda. I'm gonna add these to the mash tun. To the hot liquor tank, I'm only going to add calcium chloride, gypsum, and Epsom salt. I will not need the baking soda or pickling lime because I will not be having the roasted marks in that hot liquor tank to drop the pH. Uh, so right now the hot liquor tank is filling up to the right volume and temperature. We're almost ready to mash in, but before that, I want to walk you through our grain bill. All right, this is our grain bill for our alt beer. For the base, we use both Munich malt and Pilsner malt. I got those mixed in. And then for our specialty malts, we use a light caramel Munich, and we use a little bit of pale chocolate. So for the base, you're gonna to wanna to use that Munich malt to build up that rich maltiness, but you also wanna add a little bit of Pilsner for that dry finish. I recommend starting about a 50-50 split for that base malt. Uh, you can adjust later iterations based on whether or not you want it to be a little bit more malty or a little bit towards the drier side. That's totally up to you. For the specialty malts, we use Caramel Munich 1, or just a light around 45 Levavon. This will add those rich, bready, nutty, and toasty notes that are expected in this alt beer. We also use a very small amount of pale chocolate, less than 2% of the entire grain bill for a color adjustment. You don't want to add too much because roasted flavors are not known in this style. The mash tun is ready, so let's mash in. This is our mashing setup for the alt beer, pulling the wort from the bottom of the mash tun through our false bottom, pushing it through the wort pump, going through our Herms coil to keep the temperature where we want it, and then we are recirculating in through there. We will mash the alt beer at 152 degrees for 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, we'll raise it to 168 degrees for mash out. We are at mash out, so I'm raising the temperature of the hot liquor tank to 176, 77, so that we can raise the mash temperature up to 168 degrees. This will turn off all those enzymes so that we can lock in our preventable sugar profile. Um, we're about halfway done with mash out, but once we get there, I'll be back for the sparge. We just reached 168 degrees, so now we are sparging. We are pulling the wort from the bottom of the mash tun through our false bottom, pushing it through our wort pump all the way down into our boil kettle, which is heating up. At the same time, I'm pulling our brewing water from the hot liquor tank, pushing it through our water pump, and then rinsing all of the residual sugars that were left in those grains. So we still got a ways to go, but I'll be back when we are at the boil. We just got to boiling, so we will boil this wort for 90 minutes. We'll add our hops in, but before that, let's go over what hops we're going to use and why. Right, these are our two hop additions. This is spalt hops. These are traditionally used for the bittering of alt beers. And then these are our flavor and aroma hops. These are Hallertown Middle Fru. For the bittering hops, it doesn't have to be spalt. It can be any high alpha acid hop that adds a clean bitterness like Magnum. Um, and you want to add between 30 to 35 IBUs worth of that 60 minute mark. For the flavor and aroma hops, you are going to want to use a German Noble hop. We use the Hallertown Middle Fru because that's one of my favorite hops but you can use any of them. Regardless, you do want that noble hop character coming through in the aroma and a little bit in the flavor. So we add about half an ounce per five gallons. If you want a little bit more, you can go to about three quarters of an ounce per five gallons. We wouldn't go any higher than that and we wouldn't go any lower than half an ounce. 
We just finished the boil, so now we are whirlpooling. We're pulling the wort from the bottom of the boil kettle, pushing it through our pump into the tangential input of the boil kettle. This will create a vortex in there that will pull all of the hops, hot break, and rest of the shrub to the center of that boil kettle so we do not push it over during knockout. We will let this whirlpool for 10 minutes. After that 10 minutes is up, we're going to turn that pump off and let it all settle down for 10 minutes. Then we will go through knockout. We just finished a whirlpool, so now we are going through knockout. We are pulling the wort from the bottom of the boil kettle just above all of those hops and shrub that we collected in the center during the whirlpool. We're pushing it through our pump, into the hose, through our heat exchanger, which is rapidly dropping that temperature down from near boiling to 64 degrees. We've got our oxygen being injected right there. It's traveling all the way down into the fermenter and is pushing out all the excess air as we fill it up. We just finished knockout, so this is our gravity reading. We're coming in right at 1044, which is great. And you can start to see the formation of all that cold break. Eventually this will all settle to the bottom and leave a clear wart behind. This is about 10 minutes later. You can see that all that cold break has settled to the bottom and it is crystal clear here. This is exactly what's happening inside of the fermenter. And this is why it is so essential for you to have that quick reduction in temperature during knockout so that all of this comes out of solution and does not cause chill haze issues with your beer. This is the yeast strain that we are using. It is the German Kolsch Ale yeast from White Labs WLP029. You really want a strain for the alt beer that is highly attenuating, that will promote those crisp flavors, while also accentuating that hot bitterness. Because the alt beer is technically a hybrid style and we are using the ale yeast, we are fermenting this cooler at 64 degrees. This will really limit that ester production so that is more lager-like while not being a lager. We will ferment it at 64 degrees until it gets to a gravity of about 1014. Then we will raise that temperature up to 72 degrees for that diacetyl rest. After the diacetyl rest is complete and fermentation is done, we will cold crash it to 33 degrees. After that, we will transfer it to our bright tank, carbonate it to 2.5 volumes, keg it, and then enjoy it. All right, this is what we made. It is crystal clear. It's got that nice amber color. It has a slightly off-white head for the smell. Oh, I get the strong malt flavor coming through. A little bit of uh, nuttiness and breadiness. I do get some of the hop aroma, not as much as I expected. There's a firm bitterness, but it is balanced very nicely with that malt character. I'm getting a lot of notes of that nutty and breadiness. That's it's really pleasant. Both the bitterness and that malt character linger all the way through into the aftertaste and last a couple of seconds. That's nice. We're over the age of 21. We do not condone underage drinking. Please drink responsibly. Cheers. If you would like to see more brewing content like this, make sure you click that subscribe button right below and please let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments. Cheers.